America runs on trucks. We do all kinds of stuff with our trucks. We tow our boats, haul our gravel, even do sick jumps from time to time. But if you want to go fully electric, there aren't that many options in the truck world right now, which does make sense. Things like towing, hauling, long distance driving, battery powered vehicles aren't really the best at those quite yet. But if the whole market is going fully electric someday, the automakers are going to have to figure that out. I'm Patrick George from InsideEVs.com, and we're here in the home of American automaking, Detroit, Michigan, to see how Chevy's handling the upcoming EV truck race. This is the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado EV. GM's approach to EVs so far has been to make fully electric versions of the cars that you know and love. There's the Equinox EV, the Silverado EV now, more GMC models coming out. Everything that you like about GM, they're going to offer you a fully electric version at some point. So the, the design of the Silverado EV isn't terribly surprising. I mean, you look at it, it's a Chevy truck. It's tall, it's wide, it's a big vehicle overall. You've got this great light bar up front. Besides that, and besides the really clever little blue logo right there that says E or EV, I'm not even sure you'd know off the bat that this is an electric truck. It doesn't really scream that. Like, it's a great shape, a great design, but it's kind of subtle in a way. The good news is you get a ton of interior space on the Silverado EV, too, like, to an impressive degree. This is a really spacious cabin. We were all kind of surprised at how roomy the back seat is. You've probably been in pickup trucks where you've been really cramped in the back, and that's not the case here. And that's one thing that's great about EVs too. When you have fewer mechanical components to deal with, you can build a lot more interior space than a gas car might have. Yeah, this is, I got tons of knee room right here, tons of headroom. This is a really comfortable back seat area. So this is a really spacious vehicle. You feel it on the road because it's a big truck and it drives like a big truck, but uh, at least you get some room inside. Let's take a look at the frunk, which they thankfully did include. You know, not all EVs have this. It's beeping. By the way, the frunk release button, that's going to be down there, hidden under the bumper. And if you missed that, don't feel bad. I had to have someone show it to me, too. So decent-sized frunk. I, I think, anecdotally, the Lightning's is bigger, but this is a nice little complement to the storage space you get in the bed, and it keeps you from just having to throw things in the back seat, especially if you have people back there. So in order to illustrate how some of the really key features on the Silverado EV work, we're here with Chip Thull from Chevrolet's design team. So with the Silverado EV built on the Altium platform, it, the stiffness of that platform, because it's all integrated into the body, allowed us to, hey, we could bring the mid-gate back, which that was a pretty cool feature. And with this mid-gate, we got some new features to it. The, the glass can come out and the full thing can drop, which we'll see in a minute. But in addition to that, we can do a 60-40 pass-through. So basically with the gate up, the pass-through down, you've got about 9 feet of bed space. That's impressive. In this condition here, you got almost 11 feet. It's like 10 feet, 10 inches with the stopper. So yeah. that's, that's a huge bit of space to use. Keep, keeps your gear from sliding out on the road. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, as in, uh, the EV Silverado being an EV, we can power up pretty much anything. Uh, you run your house, power tools. It's great when you're kind of on an offshoot area and you got to use some power equipment. Plug it in. Like uh, our other, you know, the other Silverados, and we got a sidestep assist there, so good functionality just in the back overall. We move the driver forward to maximize cabin space and give a great amount of bed space, five foot ten inches. And then we said, hey, we don't need all the front overhang. There's no engine in here. So we shorten up the overhang to, again, take space away where it's not usable. I was going to ask, you know, I remember pass-through on the old Chevy Avalanche. It's like, I'm from Texas originally. That was a real popular feature 20 years ago, I remember. Yep. Had your customers been asking to bring that back on your various trucks oh, over the years? I mean, Avalanche customers were super loyal. They loved it. We had an opportunity to on the Silverado EV to bring that feature back, so we wanted to do it. Some other usable features, all LED lamps, and the RST gets a feature in the front lamps, the charge indicators, which help to illustrate kind of your state of charge when you're plugged in from the outside. Very interesting. Well, Chip, really appreciate you talking okay. to us, man. Thank you so much. Now let's talk about the tech and infotainment on this car, because this is the software part of it. It's a little controversial. Like all Ultium vehicles from GM, this is underpinned by the same common software set. So if you've seen the Chevy Blazer or even driven one, this is going to look really familiar. It's a proprietary system. It's powered by Google Automotive. So you get a voice assistant, Google Maps built in, which is really excellent. Very good at finding electric chargers and for route planning here too. This is always a test I like to do. Let's say I want to drive to Washington, D.C. All right, cool. So is it going to tell me what I need to do along the way? Okay, cool. Charging needed on arrival. Be minus 78%, so I need to charge somewhere, and it'll tell me where to do that, and also what speeds those chargers are. This is great, and this is how 
uh, a modern EV should work. There's actually two caveats to that is that one is that GM's had a lot of headaches on the software front. We tested the Chevy Blazer EV late last year. When it launched, it was fine when we had a few hours of the car, but then when we were actually testing the vehicle and plugged it into a fast charger, it died and had to be towed away, leaving one of my riders stranded in rural Virginia. So far today, no problems like that. We did have one issue where the screen blanked out and Android Automotive had to reboot itself, but other than that, it's worked totally fine. One other neat feature here is that you can take different panels and settings over here and you can move them to this center display. Like earlier, I moved my energy efficiency gauge over here so I can see we're getting about two miles per kilowatt hour after you know about 150 miles of driving, which is also not great. There's a reason for that. This truck has tremendous range. It's EPA rated 440 miles, which is incredible, but also they do that with a huge battery pack, 200 kilowatt hours. Like that is gigantic. That's a a little bit more than twice as big as anything Tesla makes right now. So you're getting a really big battery. That means longer charging times at home. It means more natural resources used. So, you know, big battery packs like this are kind of controversial in the EV space. You can think of it as almost like Hot Rod 101, like the American approach to taking a really big engine and then sticking it into a smaller vehicle. That's kind of the EV approach we get here. The other downside is, again, this is a modern Chevrolet EV, so you do not get Apple CarPlay. They are getting rid of that across the board for their EVs only. They don't want to share data and charging information and mapping with Apple. I don't really blame them, but there's a lot of people who love and trust Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and aren't super happy about that decision. Fortunately, in my experience, you know, the Google Automotive setup works really well. The voice assistant's excellent. It, it hears your commands well. It responds to them very quickly. And I think their mapping is world class. So. I'd say give this thing a shot. I know how many people love Apple CarPlay and couldn't imagine living without it, but give this a chance. I mean, if it's all working properly, it may just be a better alternative than people think. You know, in a lot of ways, I kind of think of the Silverado EV, it's almost like a supercar approach to the truck. It's now under hundred grand, which is nice, not six figures, but still super expensive, but it's packed with all kinds of crazy features. We have all the different drive modes here, off-road modes we can customize, the wow mode. I can modify the ride height with this button. It's an air suspension, so it can be lowered and raised on command. There's also Super Cruise, which is General Motors automated driving assistance system. That's one of the best in the business right now. And on the Silverado EV, it also does Super Cruise for towing, which other trucks do not do. So you're getting some driving assistance to the highway even when you're pulling your boat or something. There's gotta be something to be said for that. Is it worth its almost 100K price tag? There's definitely some hard plastic materials throughout. It's got that luxury price tag, but doesn't quite have the, like, the luxury feel you'd get in like a Sierra Denali or maybe even some of the nicer Silverado models. The little utilitarian in here and the little blazer-ish. Not sure the interior quite befits the price tag on this thing. So now we're lining up to try wow mode or wide open watts mode. And in that mode, it will unleash the full fury of this car is almost 750 horsepower. So let's talk about what wow mode even does. Uh, this modifies the pedal map, the propulsion cooling, uh, the motor's performance, the motor's sound, and the all-wheel drive system gives you the full amount of the power this car can provide and it, and it even plays that fun sound we just heard. We're gonna see in a minute if it really lives up to the transformer noises that it's sending through the speakers. Terrifying. All right, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. That's a fun party trick, isn't it? That's what you do when you're sitting with somebody who's your friend and they don't believe in electric vehicles at all. You put that on and you convince them a little bit. It's very quick, it's a fun trick. The Silverado EV like seems really, really impressive. 754 horsepower, towing up to 10,000 pounds. It can add 100 miles of range in just 10 minutes when it's plugged into a 350 kilowatt fast charger. And that's on the faster end of fast chargers. So it's not a ton of those out there yet, but there will be. But all those cool features come at a price. And in this case, that's $94,500, not including destination. We know that pickup trucks have gotten crazy expensive in recent years across the board. That's true of gas ones, electric ones. It's where all of General Motors profits come from for the most part. But that's a lot to ask, I think. If you're a truck buyer, if you're a Chevy loyalist, if you've been buying Silverados for years, what about this would get you into this one over a gas truck? I mean, there's the obvious advantages of, of EVs, the torque and the quiet and the ability to 
hopefully charge in your garage if you're able to do that. But Chevy is kind of positioning this as a truck that will exist alongside the gas Silverado and they're offering the customers the choice of what they want. Maybe in some ways they need to show that it's actually better than a gas truck. And in a lot of ways it is. And there's vehicle to load technology on this thing. They demonstrated that for us at Chevy last night. It, ran a whole house off of the Silverado EV. Like that's really impressive. A gas truck won't do that for you. But is it enough to kind of convince these diehard truck folks that this is the way of the future? After driving it for a few hours, I'm not sure yet. Maybe my opinion will change the more we get behind the wheel today. So I'm thinking about the Silverado EV and the broader EV truck marketplace, which is still really small, honestly. Dare I say a little comparable to Cybertruck in a way that they're similar in price. Both the Silverado EV and the Cybertruck are these really kind of over the top, feature-packed, radical reinventions of what a truck can be. The Cybertruck is made of stainless steel. It looks like nothing else on the road, so it goes a lot further in that direction too. But when you think about how the Silverado EV is built, the way the platform is built around the battery, the features we're talking about here, it does rewrite the playbook a good amount, which is interesting to see from a company like General Motors, about as traditional a truck making as you get. So far, I kind of like the Lightning better of these two. I think it's a slightly better value for your money. I like that there's more physical buttons and physical controls on the Lightning. And the Lightning is, it's a very traditional truck experience, but it just happens to be electric. But this thing has it beat on range, probably has it beat on range consistency. It has it beat on other kinds of features. It feels a little bit less pure truck-like. It drives like a very big car with a truck suspension. And then we have like the Rivian R1T. And I think in a lot of ways, that might be the closest competitor to the Silverado EV. The Rivian feels a little more upscale to me. It feels more premium, definitely more, you know, like tech startup-y, which Rivian definitely is. So if you like that vibe, that's the truck to go with of the two. But the experience in like a Rivian R1T is probably the closest so far to what the Silverado EV delivers. And it's also interesting at this point in the electric truck race, the Cybertruck, the Rivian, the Ford F-150, the Silverado EV now, they all kind of do their own thing. I think the wild card is gonna be the Ram Ram Charger, which has a gas range extender in it. That might be the best of both worlds for a lot of truck owners who do regular towing and hauling and are still concerned about where they're gonna charge or range. So we'll see how that one shakes out. Yeah, so far in driving this thing around Michigan, it's an interesting truck because the way it's built, you know, this is not a purely body on frame truck the way the Ford F-150 Lightning is, which is very much kind of an F-150 stuff with batteries. This has the Ultium batteries built into the frame of the car with the components around it. I've heard some people calling it Ulta body in some ways, so it's not completely unibody like a Honda Ridgeline or something is, but it's closer to that than a pure body on frame truck. And the result is that you get something that I think drives like a very big car almost. The suspension still has that truck kind of bounce to it, that firmness that you'd want for off-roading, for towing, for handling, more rugged terrain. It feels a little less pure truck-like, not necessarily in a bad way either. So now we're gonna try towing. GM was kind enough to hook up a boat uh, onto the back of it. I don't think Inside EVs gets to keep that boat when this test is over, but you know, you can't win them all. So we're setting off. The truck is in its dedicated towing mode right now. So my range is set at 121 miles uh, with about 62% battery. Already it's calculating that it's not gonna have as much range as it would normally because it's got a boat attached to it. And Chevy says that the range losses from towing this truck are equivalent to what the range losses would be on a comparable gas truck. Whatever fuel economy you lose there, it's gonna be similar to the electric range losses you have here. But we got a lot more torque than you might expect, so I'm eager to see how this electric truck does with this big boat behind us. And as with everything towing, it means calling our shots carefully and hoping everybody around us is gonna be nice to us and let us drive a little slower than they are. And we're off. Oh, we got a roundabout up ahead too with this boat behind us, that's fun. It goes around the roundabout really well, even with the boat behind it, and I'm keeping an eye on my trailer too. Let's give it the beans here and see what it does. It's definitely not fast, but the acceleration is not bad with that boat behind it. I mean, it's immediate, it's not struggling at all. We're up to 50 miles an hour and climbing, driven plenty of cars that are slower than this. And yeah, it's really not bad, very smooth awfully hard to argue with. I think that's been one of the areas where electric trucks have obviously been the weakest. I mean, the Lightning is a very good truck, but it's gotten a lot of criticism for its range when it's towing things. And this, if GM's successful with the Silverado EV, it's gonna be a towing champion too, without losing a lot of range. So in the end, what do we think of the new Silverado EV? Honestly, I end up kind of mixed on it. 
there are some things it does really well. The range is remarkable. 440 miles, you're not really going to worry too much about range anxiety ever again once you get up that high. That's incredible. From an engineering perspective, the truck is really impressive. It's packed with features. It does a lot. I think the wow mode is going to surprise your passengers. But here's the thing. I keep wondering, if you're faced with the choice between this and a gas Silverado, and you weren't sure you wanted an EV, you weren't dead set on going electric for your next car, would you go with this over the gas truck? I'm not sure yet, but I think this is a great start for General Motors' electric truck game. If this EV transition is going to work, we're going to need all kinds of different electric vehicles at all kinds of different price points. I'm hoping that we'll see a lot more electric trucks from GM, and I'm sure that in the future we will. For now, you know, a $94,500 supercar, is this a game changer? I'm not convinced that it is yet, but I'm eager to see where it goes next.